This is actually uh, their special RAIM memory, uh, redundant array of independent memories module. So it's a RAIM module, yeah, explain that one. Or that's, that's, that, that's the memory. How about power delivery? These are insane. This is the power delivery module, one of five in this system. So if you've used the internet, you've used Linux. It powers the smartphone you're probably watching this on. It powers the edge infrastructure carrying your data. And there's a high probability the server processing the request is Linux based as well. Linux is everywhere and for good reason. It's configurable, versatile, and can be highly optimized for any use case. In the business world, that's super important for both internal and external workflows. Companies build big infrastructure on a Linux base with hypervisors such as KVM and containers such as Kubernetes. Most of these are powered by x86, Intel or AMD or ARM. What if I told you there's another way? In 2021, IBM introduced this, the Telum processor. Hi, my name is Christian Jacobi. I'm the chief architect for Z processor design. And today I'm introducing the IBM Telum chip. Telum is the next generation processor for IBM Z and Linux One systems. Telum is a chip engineered to meet the high customer demands for volume transactional workloads. And it sits in the center of IBM's mainframe portfolio. But what if I were to tell you that you can buy today modern form factor systems, systems with quantum safe cryptography, built-in AI accelerators, seven nines uptime, all using this processor, but committed to an open source stack built on Linux. Today in this sponsored video, IBM is announcing Rock Hopper 4, its latest Linux One based system that can fit into any rack. So let's be clear, with this audience, there are two questions to answer. One, IBM runs Linux. And two, why would people ditch x86 for this? Well, let's start with Linux and Linux One. Linux One being IBM's name for their Linux solution. Yes, IBM runs Linux. You may have heard of Red Hat Enterprise Linux or RHEL, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, or Canonical Ubuntu, three very popular Linux-based operating systems for business, enterprise, and the cloud. They are all supported here. Community Linux distributions, such as Debian and Fedora, also have compatible versions. IBM has been investing in Linux since 1999, and the systems we're looking at today are the fourth generation of Z processor that is built to support Linux. On top of this, IBM purchased Red Hat in October 2018 for $34 billion. At that time, almost every one of the Fortune 500 companies relied on Red Hat Enterprise Linux in some form or another. IBM is serious about Linux support on all its hardware, both Z and Power. Anyone familiar with Linux will find Linux One a seamless integration, regardless of the hardware underneath. This is important because normally we associate Z with big mainframe iron and big mainframe use cases. The chip has eight big cores, 256 megs of L3 cache and runs up to 5.2 gigahertz. The big mainframe is a multi-rack solution of 32 chips purchased by a variety of customers. These are often financial institutions for uptime and security or airlines for managing routes and passengers. They could be big event platforms to manage ticketing or the healthcare industry for data security. But the systems being announced today are not the big mainframes. They're the mainstream servers, again, built on Linux. Sure, you can buy a full multi-rack system, and they call that the Linux One Emperor 4, which was announced in 2022. Emperor has up to 200 cores, and customers are using it to replace A8 x86 racks with one Linux One Emperor 4. For those on a sustainability kick, customers are also reporting up to a 75% decrease in power consumption with that system. But not all businesses want or need a big server rack. For the small to medium market, alongside the Emperor, we have the new Rock Hopper 4. Rock Hopper is a smaller type of penguin, and of course, this is Linux, and this is IBM's fourth generation. It comes in two designs, either a full rack with an IBM frame that fits in the standard data center dimensions, and it also comes with that fancy Linux One door, or it comes as a standard data center rack mount version, which is also a 19-inch design. Rock Hopper has the same design philosophy as the bigger models, running Linux on top of the Telum processor. That's what makes it Linux One. But this time, 
Instead of offering up to 200 cores like Emperor, Rock Hopper offers up to 68 cores at 4.6 gigahertz. And it looks something like this. I can hear you loudly from the back already. Even with Linux, why would any company replace a fully working embedded x86 system and uh, deployment with something else? And the answer is you know, more obvious than you might think. A lot of business workloads are now virtualized or containerized using languages that are architecture agnostic. One of the biggest deployments for these systems is with databases. Databases such as MongoDB, which is a NoSQL document managing organizing database. What that means is it's useful for large sets of distributed data, such as customer records, transactions, and code workflow. Imagine you're a local hotel chain, for example, and you just keep track of lots of data points. You need to tra keep track of things of reservation status, details of clients, or financial details like credit cards. The Linux One portfolio is designed to work best when there's a platform that collates all of that data into one place. And as an added bonus here, these systems all have onboard AI accelerators that do in situ machine learning on transaction fraud. On the power side, IBM Materials are showcasing their customers are replacing over a thousand x86 cores, and we're talking Skylake class cores, with a single one of these Linux One designs. If you keep track of enterprise hardware today, data movement is almost as power hungry as the compute itself. So by having a dedicated system in a singular rack, rather than a distributed system over many nodes, over many data centers like you might get in the cloud, helps keep that power consumption down. Chips with large caches also help. And this is again where I point out that Telum has 32 megs of L2 cache per core and gigabytes of virtual L4 cache. For more details on this, I've already got a video on it, so go check that out. One of the biggest pulls for any company doing an upgrade is cost saving. Now, Cost saving and sustainability, saving energy, sometimes don't go hand in hand, but in this case they do. Part of this Linux One platform is a software stack. A single system can have hypervisors that support 85 simultaneous operating systems, each, each one, one of those, those with thousands of users. users. Now, one of the biggest expenses here is, especially with databases, is in the licensing costs. Most licenses cost per core. So ideally, you need a few big, powerful cores rather than many, many small ones. We're seeing Modern big x86 chips and ARM chips go, you know, 56 cores, 64 cores, 96 cores, and soon 128. Inside Rockhopper, each chip has eight cores, and you know, this is a dual module design, so there's 16 in here. But current customers are already consolidating in a 10 to 1 fashion from x86 to Telum. Once you factor in those database licenses, partitioning, diagnostics, tuning, and everything else software related, these new systems are built to drop licensing costs by around a third and support costs by up to three quarters. So why exactly am I here? Did IBM pay me to come here to extol the benefits of their system? You betcha they did. But I also wanted to get hands on with the stuff. You all know I can play with x86 and ARM CPUs day in, day out. And I've you know, covered Z processors before like Telum, but I've never actually seen one in the flash. So you know, hands on and unfortunately this won't fit in my baggage. It's a really, you know, it's a different way of thinking about things. And uh, without actually getting hands on, it's very hard to articula art articulate to you all exactly what that means. So here in front of me now is one of these rack mount Linux One systems, Rockhopper 4. Now let me talk to you about uptime, what they call resiliency. You want your system to run all day, every day. They call this, you know, the nines. So seven nines is kind of like the big standard for the industry. Seven nines means three, up, three seconds of downtime per year. In order to support that, you need a load of features, all of which Rockhopper has. So take, take, take the Talon chip. We've got four sockets here. Each one of these, you've got two dies per module. But imagine a core dies. What do you do then? Talon is built such that with the spare cores you have in the system, you can essentially disable one core and fire up another. These systems are sometimes populated with half the cores enabled, so you've got spare cores aplenty. Or how about a memory module goes wrong? Each module has spare chips, so if one goes wrong, another can be used. This is actually uh, their special RAIM memory, uh, redundant array of independent memories module. So it's a RAIM module, yeah, explain that one. Or that's, that's, the, that's the memory. How about power delivery? These are insane. This is the power delivery module, one of five in this system. Now, if 
two or three of them fail, they can be replaced, workload gets moved on to another system, and these can get replaced. The whole point is, it's all transparent to the system, to the people using the system, to the applications using the system. This is uptime, this is resiliency, and these are features all that Rockhopper 4 has. The point here is you can't predict hardware failure, even with all the simulation and pre-testing, and sometimes it's random. The whole point with these systems is that rather than shut the system down, like you might have to with XAE6, you can keep on running because there is redundancy. On top of that, there's also support for quantum safe cryptography, you know, leveraging uh, the hardware ability to protect against what could be an upcoming threat with quantum computers. I've got a video on that coming up shortly, so stay tuned. While I've been here at the development lab in Berbligen, Germany, IBM have been going through some of their big customers they have for Linux One. Andreas Bieswanger, IBM Fellow and CTO for Z Systems Platform Management and Optimization. Sure, we are working with Met Office, leading provider in weather and climate um, forecasts. And they are running a large number of Linux applications, um, hundreds of databases and have petabytes of critical information. And, and what they had in the past is using x86, but the um, increasing demand in weather information threatened to reduce the manageability, the reliability and the cost effectiveness of this solution. So given this vast impact of their services to millions of um, lives and businesses, we helped them to transition for, to Linux One for better performance, uh, scalability, and resiliency. Um, moreover, they are able to reduce uh, energy consumption and operational cost, which is really essential when dealing with a large amount of unplanned uh, information requests. And, and finally, um, the Linux One solution is cyber resilience, ensuring that they can handle um, extreme load um, while keeping their services secure and protected. Well, I guess we were working with City for a long time. They are one of our um, very important customers. Just recently, they expanded beyond their traditional workload on a Mongo as a service setup. They're one of the large, uh, largest kind of consumers of Mongo DB and kind of using um, Linux One as a solution to kind of consolidate this massive amount of uh, workload onto a single platform for improved uh, performance, uh, resiliency, energy consumption and sustainability and regu regulatory compliance. Well, this is typically very easy because the Linux One environment provides a vast um, amount of um, ecosystem. We're kind of providing all the capabilities and services that one would expect in a Linux environment. So often the transition is super easy. You just kind of take your existing applications. You absolutely need to recompile them uh, or provide them for the different instruction set architecture. But other than that, you then move over. So it's not untypical that customers migrate within weeks or very few months their, their production from their existing setup into the Linux One environment. So in true sponsored content fashion, the question becomes, did your business even consider using Linux One? I used one, and I managed to access my YouTube channel on it, so it gets a thumbs up from me. Many thanks to IBM for giving us a tour of their development lab here in Germany. They're actually going to be moving to a new facility at the end of the year, so we'll have to come again for that. We're also covering their quantum safe cryptography support in an upcoming video, so stay tuned for that one as well.